around us and just shoot you 24 7. Yeah. So. Give me three to five rounds! So every night, yeah, we've got full auto, like the whole thing. At an instructor level class, if you ND, if you fly yourself or somebody else, you're out. If you press around and it doesn't hit your intended target, you need to fix that shit before you press the next button around. Does that make sense? Don't fuck it up, Blake. We're all watching. Shields pile up in the office camera <clears throat> at the patrol office, right? They're in the dust closet because guys are like, oh, well, we got them if we need them. Well, they never go grab them, and it's because they don't feel 100% confident in, in their ability to, to work with the tool. It, you know, deaths, right? Sure. And then you get it in UCR, which is every every shooting. What I would really like to see is a database of wins. Like, don't, don't fucking collect all the data on how we're losing, right? So from that, you have to kind of do a negative extrapolation to say, like, okay, like, there's a, like, I see all the ways we're losing, so this must mean that if we do the opposite, we're trending to better success. And then we validate that through NLTA, we validate that through experience, we validate that through successful gunfights on videos and things like that. So it's, it's, an, it's, an, incomplete, um, it's an incomplete data set. I will say though, this is, uh, if this was 54% of officers not using immediately available cover out of all gunfights, okay, right? But this is 54% of losses, right? And so you have to realize like when we are not, so what the data is saying essentially, right, is that when we're not using cover, we're fucking losing. A lot, right? Um, and Blake is right, so we have a database of about 9,500 uh, <coughs> shooting videos that we throw in an Excel spreadsheet and pull the numbers from that. And we're seeing, it's, it's somewhere in the low 70, 70 percentile of just officers not using immediately available cover, right? So it's, that's a problem, right? Logo on it. And, uh, and it'll have the gas cap. Have you seen the gas cap? Yeah, the yep. brand new one with the USB C yep. stuff. Yep. So it'll have gas caps. Yeah, too. Yep, so the, the plug will be here on the bottom instead of the back. It's a choice to have the push button and the um, IR and, and yeah. right. Okay. Yeah, it's IR and white light, this nice. one is. But the gas cap will make it to where it can be put a uh, remote switch yeah, yeah. or yeah, both. or push button, right? So. And it's a non-made cable management, if you make it super long. Yeah, so so this is just my, that's my cable, mm -hmm. but Unity is making the- One special for you? The plastic one, yeah, mm -hmm. with, a, with a long cable. Huge. Oh, and like, you can buy just the mount, mm -hmm. so you can put like an old pistol light. Yeah, okay. You know what I mean? Yeah. So. Nice. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I'm super curious about the flat shield because we're super familiar with the curve, curve one yeah. for the balance. Yeah. But yeah. The, the shield that I'm designing is flat, and it's it's the cut is a little better than that one, and it's a little lighter. Okay. And that's the one that I, I hope to send to you guys.
That is, uh, that's 19 pounds. 19? So whatever, I don't know what that is in kilograms. <laughs> <laughs> don't care. <laughs> Last time we just uh, asked you and you say, I, I don't care, I don't speak in kilos. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, I don't know what that means. <laughs> Huge. Ouais, 8 kilos. 8 kilograms. 8 for your information. <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay. And guys, Rex working with some shit between them and the threat, and we're handing them a tool and saying, hey, just do whatever you'd normally do. Well, they're certainly doing that, right? It's just not the results we want to see. You guys see that kind of playing out in the video there? Alright, well there's a, this is actually a pretty long video if you can take the segments out and just watch the whole thing. There's a few different angles on this and it just kind of further reiterates what I'm saying there. Uh, but that's why today I want to focus on the mechanical aspect of it. Because dudes, it's all for nothing if number one, we don't get our hits. And number two, the integrity of the shield work is not there. So that's what we're going to focus on. That's going to set us up for the range. Any questions on what we've discussed today? The data? The philosophy of of uh, offensive shield work. I'll further kind of define that for you, but anything at this point. No? All right, cool. So it's going to set us up from the range, uh, kind of right around. level class if you nd if you flag yourself or somebody else you're out that's the ramifications Does that makes sense it's an instructor level class we don't have time to work on like hey man don't point your gun at yourself or somebody else right like you can't be like oh man bro like dude fucking uh uh you know i tagged i tagged him in the leg but you know it was furtive movement right so understand that you have to tie in the lateral you have to tie in the um the uh ramifications of breaking those those what is and is not acceptable, right? And for this course, and for should be for all instructor level courses, you're gone, right? We don't have time to remediate you. So what I'm trying to say is this, if we're shooting two-handed like this, then the way I shoot one-handed shouldn't look any different, right? What's difficult about shooting one-handed, and you probably found this out when you switch to the dot, well, one of the things that's difficult, not the only thing. One of the things that's difficult about shooting one-handed is now I don't have the same reference from my body when I drive the gun out. So when you drive the gun out two-handed, you know exactly where that gun is to stop, right? Because you've got two hands that are coming together and they got a full point of extension and the gun lands at extension. So then you transition to red dot. It made you have to tweak that a little bit, right? You had to be a little bit more, uh, you had to perfect that process because you didn't have as much of a varying degree of sight picture. And now you go to do it one-handed and the gun doesn't stop or land in the same spot. Does that make sense? So if you got guys that are now canting the gun when they shoot one-handed, dudes, they're fighting on fucking hard mode. Because now when they press the gun out two-handed, they've got where the gun lands. And now when they press the gun out one-handed, they've got a completely different place in which the gun postures. Are you guys tracking? Now, can you get good both ways? Yeah. But in limited time, dude, I need those same, same. I need to have a commonality in training. When you drive the fucking gun out, whether it be two-handed or one-handed, I need to look at as same as it can look. Whether that be sight picture, whether that be what the sights do when they're tracking, they're tracking up and down, or more specifically, where does the gun land at extension? Does that make sense? So it's in the same place every time, or as close to the same place as it can be. <clears throat> Any questions on that? Oh, nugget. Don't fuck it up, Blake. We're all watching. <laughs> well, here's the deal. This don't, one's don't uh, tell me about how gun, you just got gun, your dot. I just got no, the no, no, fucking it's, gun. It's, and, I had hey, like hey. eight malfunctions in the last magazine. So, you know, it's only a four thousand dollars. Yeah, yeah. Uh, hey, say, just, just do what, do what you were gun. doing, but better, Blake. Be All right, fine. so check it out. Again, in training, especially in dry fire, I want to create a a uh, a pattern, right? So when I draw the gun out, I need it to land in the same spot between two-handed and one-handed presentation. 
dude, this is a beautiful thing to fucking do in dry fire. So first draw stroke, I'll go ahead two hands. I know that's where it landed. Well, on the next draw stroke, I should be looking for the same thing. If my dot doesn't land in the same place or I immediately don't have a sight picture, then I know the gun didn't land in the same place, right? So it's kind of a self-analysis there. So you can draw two-handed. You can remove the uh, support hand from the gun. I recommend grabbing the plate carrier and creating that same elbow leverage with this hand. I'll explain more later on why I do that. So leverage, I'm driving this elbow. I'm breaking the elbow, driving it down and in. Good to go. And of course, right? So as I mentioned, cool. Follow the threat to the ground, give me a post engagement. I'll give you guys a little bit more contextually appropriate post engagement in just a few, but give me a post engagement. Threat's good, I'm good, gun's good, work it back to the holster, right? So first couple draw strokes, two-handed, removing the support hand throughout the progression because I'm gonna give you six, eight reps on this. Three to five, primary hand only, go! Does that make sense? Dude, gun always has the right of way. Like priorities on the fucking gun, make it up and down. That's how I'm gonna get, get my hits. When I go to add the shield, it's whatever it lands or however it lands. Some shield designs will allow you to run it on a 90. Some will be more on like a 40, some a 45, maybe some even more egregious than that, depending on the cut, shape, size, weight of the shield. With that being said, I teach it as a layering tool, not a standalone tool. So your ass should already be using some other form of cover, right? So I don't care that it's not protecting my, people are like, but it's not protecting your belly now. Bitch, I'm trying to protect my 88, right? Like if I'm, if I'm protecting my belly, then maybe it's something else in my environment allowing me to do that. I'm not so overexposing in the threshold of a door. I'm not overexposing around a car. You guys track with me so far? Right, the priorities on this. And I may say uh, three and two, three and two. So you draw the gun out. These are gonna be upper chest. This is the first example of trying to, he's got a heavy motherfucker, I already see him fighting it. But this is the first example of trying to posture with a shape in the environment and having to tweak what you got going on. Now a lot of guys will try to keep their lower body so far behind fucking cover that when they get this fucking shit around cover, they're not stable, they're not athletic, and they're overexposing to do that. Dudes, I don't care if your feet fucking peek around cover. This ain't fucking Navy SEALs and we're moving in under nods where we don't want somebody to see us, right? They, they fucking know we're there, right? So bump that left foot out, giving you a little wider base. Now he has a wider base, he can conform a little bit more behind cover. And you actually take like a step back so you're not like trying to uh, work around right. it. And there we go. So now the angle of cover dictates the angle of the gun and that's about what we're looking for. Move to the barrel. As soon as you went through, swap number two. I'm a friend, Daddy. Okay. I 
Ouais, c'est bon. Ouais, This drill, left, right, and six. I'm gonna move to the next one. So I'm look, I'm looking, there's nobody down there, so I can orient the gun the direction I'm moving. I've depressed the muzzle looking over the gun. Moving up on the car. First thing I'm looking for, follow me, come on. First thing I'm looking is inside the car. So I'm not worried about any of this downrange. It doesn't exist. So I'm looking inside the car. If I was trying to give myself cover based off of an interior threat, what's the one pillar I could use? That front A, right? So I'm already posturing off of that. I'm layering. I'm layering the shield off of that A pillar, looking inside the car. All right, cool. There's nobody in the car. Now I'm looking on the immediate exterior of the car, which I get this guy at the B pillar. I can engage him from here, but that's not optimal, yes? So I know, fuck, I need to get better cover. I'll bump to the B. You can choke up on the car if you want to use it uh, as just kind of a point of, uh, of basing off the car. Oh. Now I'm gonna move, he's moved, right? So C to C. Let's move again. And finish that drill. All right, cool. Yeah, you ready? Ready, move, move back, move back. 